in our Abuja studios is a medical laboratory scientist who is also the National Publicity Secretary of the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria, Dr. Ifai Kesmer. Good evening, Dr. Kesmer. Thank you for uh, joining us at this time. Yeah, good evening, Ladi, and um, Ramadan Karim to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Now, yesterday it was reported that uh, 40, over 40 healthcare workers have tested positive to COVID-19 in Nigeria. Let's talk about the susceptibility of the health workers who are doing the actual testing, those who come in contact with samples, and many of these are members of your group, the laboratory, the medical laboratory scientists. What is the protocol protecting them against uh, contamination or coming into contact with uh, viruses which probably are embedded in some of these samples? Yes, thank you. Going by the going by the protocol of intervention, we have test, trace, isolate, and treat. And that exactly shows the degrees of vulnerability of frontline health workers. Like you rightly said, the medical laboratory scientist is quite vulnerable because it's like the gatekeeper, it's the case, it defines the case and um, confronts the disease, COVID-19, naked. And so talking about protocol, you find out that what will make healthcare worker susceptible to outbreaks like this is when there's a compromise on the rules of engagement. There's always a rule of engagement. And so when that is violated, casualty level will be high. We're worried that well over 40 health workers have tested positive to COVID-19 in just within this uh, short time. The worry is because if we continue to deplete our workforce, healthcare workforce, then the populace will become endangered. What can we do? What we need to do is to look at facility and safety. There are two prongs in facility and safety. One deals with the issue of primary barrier, and that is when we talk about personal protective equipment, which, of course, we know is in short supply globally. And since it is in short supply globally, what do we do? Judicious use of what is available. I therefore would expect that in concert with the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, the National Center for Disease Control should develop a protocol that would define minimum PPE to be done per activity, from sampling to, uh, to other processes that take place in the lab, including the places of isolation. Now, why am I talking about isolation? I, the isolation places re, is actually what will require more of the secondary barrier, because it deals with the issue of construction and design. And you find out that we have uh, because of this outbreak, there are emergency arrangements being made to use different places not originally designed for this purpose for that. We therefore must factor in issues of secondary barrier. It is very important. Again, is this, before we deploy our workforce, we must train them on the nitty gritty of how to protect themselves. That seems because we're under hurry, we're in a hurry to put people out, that may not have been properly and thoroughly done. Once the protocol is developed, if I want to go take a, a, an osopharyngeal swab, this is what you must do, minimum, because of the scarcity we have currently in Nigeria. We're worried that because of contamination, the lab in Kano was shut down. We're happy to note that the DGNC DC said today that between now and Monday, that lab will come up. What therefore do we need? We need to train people more in batches. So if we have, as is the case in Kano, contamination and alleged uh, infection of some of the laboratory workers there, we will have a ready replacement. It means that what the Federal Minister of Health should concentrate on doing now is to build more capacity. And I have said that we are willing to give ample volunteer. We have well over 30,000 young medical laboratory scientists eager to volunteer their skills and competencies, particularly molecular testing. So as we look at the issue of uh, healthcare workers that are getting infected. The case in Bauchi comes readily to mind. The three persons, all of them workers of the World Health Organization. Something must be a miss issue about training, orientation. Again, is that we must also consider 
Is there cases of malpractice? Is there cases of quackery? Is there, is there, are there cases of people overreaching themselves beyond their competencies and training just because there's a need to intervene? These are the things we need to consider. But for us, it is worrisome. We're happy that the government has taken out insurance for well over 5,000 workforce. We're also happy that government is beginning to look at the issue of hazard. But the point is, look at the 40. Uh, persons infected and the number that have died. The death and infection have no respect for any person or profession. He hits a nurse, he hits a, a medical lab scientist, he hits a doctor without asking you what is your profession. It simply means that whatever government is going to do for all these frontline health workers, government must take cognizance that the impact is same for all and it must, there must not be issues of parity, disparity or discrimination. Uh, Dr. Kasmir, thank you very much. Uh, but I, I need to ask you as well about move, uh, going ahead. You've talked a lot about what now needs to be done, a lot of testing and a lot of uh, other stuff. But in terms of where we are now, particularly with those who are in the front lines of this, uh, medical lab scientists, doctors, nurses, and so on, what, can you tell us, do you have any information about what the situation is now in terms of uh, uh, PPEs and other such equipment that will protect them uh, from some of, of, of these uh, containment and uh, uh, other issues that have arisen as a result of their direct contact with patients and samples. In one of the inserts that uh, you played, there was um, a scene where sample was being taken. If you look at that individual that was taking the sample, Yes, he had the overall suit, which is good. He had the hand gloves. But if you look at the head region, the entire head region is exposed. And so in the process of taking that nasopharyngeal swab and the patient or that individual sneezes, he's very vulnerable because he's, there's, no face, there's no face shield. So as we talk to you, as we speak today, it is known everywhere that there's a short supply, there's a, a deficit in the supply of PPE. What we need to do as healthcare providers is to make sure that we judiciously use what is available across the country. It's very important. Yes, the insert is playing, well done, uh, a personal protective equipment, but you, the head region is, empty, is, is uncovered. It's very important the head region is covered because a splutter from that individual will go straight to his face. So that is why we are uh, saying that for every stage of the engagement, from sampling, there has to be a fine. The next one is properly kitted for that sampling process. That is exactly how it should be. But the worry is that we have this in short supply. Again, without this, it is dangerous to go sample anybody because you, you, the worry is most healthcare professionals who had gotten infected may have actually been infected by asymptomatic persons who had come to the hospital or healthcare facility for some other reason or had engaged for some other cause. The worry is this. Every person we need to put on the front line to work from now henceforth, I expect that the National Center for Disease Control should get a baseline screening for such individuals. So look at the nurses you are seeing there. If they are the ones that are profiling, student, uh, uh, um, profiling patients as they come to the hospital, I can tell you they are not properly kitted for that because it is not written on their foreheads until it is tested. You wouldn't say the, 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 the status of any particular individual. So for us, uh, doctor, what the government doctor, needs to do I can swear, is to encourage you. We've local production We've of completely PPE run out of time, Dr. Kasper. Uh, I, I, I believe that uh, the point that you're trying to make has been very well heard by uh, those uh, in authority. Dr. Ifai Kasmer, uh, Publicity Secretary of the Association of Medical Lab Scientists of Nigeria, joining us from our Abuja studio.